session one, we had a brief insight into asthma. In this session, we will have a closer look at establishing the diagnosis of asthma and the role of different investigations that are available from an effective history to using spirometry and peak flow meters. Let's move on. Asthma can present at any age and therefore it is difficult to establish whether the presenting symptoms are due to asthma or whether they could be due to other conditions. Depending on the age of the presentation will clearly define the possibility of other illnesses presenting in the same way. The four main symptoms that tend to present are cough, wheezing, shortness of breath and a tight chest. Although a number of these can be present in other conditions and not all of these have to be present but usually more than one of these needs to be there. In the history you'll tend to find that uh, these symptoms are frequent and recurrent. Other elements of the history are to establish whether these symptoms are worse at night or early in the morning. It's not uncommon with children to have a history presented from parents of persistent coughing through the night which is causing sleep disturbance for everyone else. Also, in the history, consider triggers. We discussed some of these triggers in the first episode, but look at exercise. Is it worse during and after exercise? Is it worse when they go out from a warm environment into a cold environment? Do they have pets, especially at night time in the room? Or do they have um, pillows and blankets which have feathers in, which can make uh, asthma worse? Also look at, also look at the uh, uh, house. Is there any damp in the house that may be exacerbating their problem? Do these happen separate to a cold we know that with a cold you can develop these symptoms, but do they happen when the child is not suffering with a cold? Are there any other presenting uh, symptoms as discussed previously with things like acid reflux in the gastroesophageal reflux disease? Or do they have any catarrh running down the back of the nose, so, as in the postnatal drip uh, syndrome? Look at atopy. We mentioned this previously. Is there a history within the patient of asthma, eczema, hay fever? Or is there a history in the family of this condition? We know it tends to be uh, more stronger when mum suffers with an atopic condition. And therefore make sure that we take a, a strong history. Has the patient recently been taking new medication which has brought on the symptoms? Take a drug history. Has the patient taken aspirin? any other non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs such as ibuprofen or if it's an older patient have they been started on beta blockers such as propranolol uh, by their GP. Do the symptoms happen when the patient is just at work? The symptoms tend to disappear when they come or go on holiday or when it's the weekend. So could it be occupational asthma? We mentioned previously that over 250 different chemicals can uh, cause these symptoms when occupational asthma uh, exist. Moving on from there, once the GP or the nurse has seen the patient, inquire whether there are any symptoms on the chest. Can they hear any wheezing? Not always present in an asthmatic patient, but it does give uh, more of an indication if it's there. And also, has the patient ever had inhalers in the past and if they have did it make the symptoms better or did it have no impact so taking a good strong history in asthma is the cornerstone of making a provisional diagnosis and in children sometimes a provisional diagnosis is all we can try and establish before considering whether to start some inhalers and then it's a trial and error situation as to whether the inhalers have made the symptoms better or had no impact. Where they've had no impact, there really needs to be emphasis given to considering other diagnosis or possibly referring to a specialist clinic for further assessment and investigations.